there. My name is Tony Whalen, and I teach English at the Tarrant County College Northeast Campus and at some of our local dual credit partner high schools. I look forward to working with you through the Engaged Learning Institute. Hi, I'm Natalie Russell, and I'm really looking forward to serving as your facilitator for the Engaged Learning Institute for this cohort. I teach biology at the Connect campus, and I've been there in a full-time capacity for about three years. And before that, I was an adjunct instructor for about 10 years at the Northeast campus. I began uh, becoming interested in active learning several years ago, and I participated in the Active Learning Academy the summer of 2019 through the fall of 2019. One of the things that I enjoyed the most about Active Learning Academy, in addition to learning the strategies and, and learning some ideas about how to implement those, was actually what I got from my colleagues. I met many people from the district that I didn't already know, and we made up a lot, we, we all came from different disciplines, um, but we all could learn something from one another. So I enjoyed hearing each week from each of them and their ideas of how they would implement it in their class or how they did implement it, what worked, what didn't work. And it was also very encouraging to share what I tried in my classroom or what I thought might work to hear some, some positive or some constructive feedback from those members. So I look forward in this cohort in the next, in the next several weeks for us to learn from one another and to make sure that we take what we learn and, and help students by engaging them in the material and helping them be successful in your classes. Hi, my name is Shelley Hole and I teach chemistry on South Campus. I want to share an activity with you where I had a student announce the success of the activity to the entire class. So I've been teaching over 20 years at South Campus and we have a lab that we do in a couple of our courses where we use flashcards. And so naming and formulas for ionic compounds can be a difficult concept for a lot of our students. It's much more complicated than just memorization like we do for elements, names to symbols. So they have to use location of the periodic table, um, Roman numerals, something in the name. There are a couple different ways for them to know the charges, but the name does not help with the subscripts. So they have to be able to put positive and negative ions together and come up with names or formula to name, name to formula. So the lab that we do on this is a non-chemical lab. And so it's practice with flashcards, but our flashcards, we have something like this. So we've got yellow, positive, pink, negative symbols on one side, and they have to pair up not all positive ones with negative ones and twos with twos, but you know, here we have a one with a two, a two with a three, and they have to figure out how many of each that you need, and that's how they get to the subscripts. These cards also on the back side have the name so they can practice learning the symbol to name of the ion, but also when you put it together, how do you get the name of the compound? And then they're filling out um, a data page with that different information. And so it's multi-step so we've got ionic and covalent compounds and so if you go through the rules and the instruction and I've kind of learned that I can't spend too much time talking I need to let them go ahead and start the activity so I go over some rules and guidelines give them a couple examples at the beginning and then let them work on it so this particular student does the experiment as his group of lab partners are turning their lab in, he mentions talking to the students, not really to me, but he announces it more to the whole class of, wow, just at the beginning of class when she was talking, I had no clue what was going on. I didn't know what we were supposed to do and I was a little bit worried. And then now I get it and you know, this was a fun lab. So for me, that's very rewarding to, to hear and to know that what you're doing is working in that case. It wasn't a new activity that I was trying. It was something that I've been doing for over 20 years and I wasn't the instructor who came up with it. So I kind of inherited it as I um, started my career here at TCC. 
but it's rewarding to hear the comments from the students. So when you are doing activities, don't be afraid to ask if the students liked it, how they feel it benefited, and that even if it's something you've done a long time, you may have different success stories of, of the students sharing how it affected them. And then that also helps us, you know, with ways of we can improve it or do it differently. Or like in my case, it's letting them get in and get their hands on it quicker without giving so much instruction to them because the learning process is when they're doing the work, not when I'm talking about it. So it's important to me even though I teach in an asynchronous environment to make sure that my class is engaging for students and to provide them lots of practice opportunities that are low stakes or ungraded so that they can build on what they've learned and apply it and ultimately see how it does relate to their everyday lives. So in this example, I would like to show you um, how one way that we practice the scientific method in, in my class. So at this point in the semester, they've been introduced to the scientific process and into different variables in an experimental design. And so I, they, have, they have been given different examples and shown what the variables are for those examples. But this gives them an opportunity to set up an experimental design on their own and to identify what the different variables are in this experimental design. So for this uh, opportunity, I haven't, uh, it's not graded. They do have the opportunity to earn bonus points. I've used a software called Mentimeter. And the reason I like this is because it's anonymous. So sometimes I know that students are a little bit hesitant to answer if their name is associated with that. What if it's the wrong answer if they feel unsure? It's asynchronous, meaning that they don't have to all do this at the same time. Just within the three-day period, they have to go to this website, enter the code, and answer the questions. At the end of that three-day period, then I post for them the results of their entire class's feedback. So they can read those. And then the, the really important thing now is, is that I'll create a discussion board, and they will discuss together. Uh, about what they think now that they've seen all the other answers that their, student, that their classmates have given. And I can also give feedback in that discussion board. So they're learning, they're participating, they're giving each other feedback, and they're building on just the knowledge of, you know, other than just defining what a variable is, they're actually putting it into practice. Now, you could use this, you don't have to use this software. You could use a discussion board to have students give you feedback. Um, any kind of a concept check if you want to find out where they're at with a particular concept and you pose a question. Or you could use it for um, the muddiest point. So at some point you could ask students, you know, what is your muddiest point in this particular lesson? And you could allow the, stu each, the students to give each other help on the muddiest points or you could chime in. Um, and it, it helps, I use that some, but it helps me to see what is it in my class that students are getting what is it that maybe I need to reinforce? One other example that I'll give you that I use in my class, and that is I have my students when we cover plants to go out and take a selfie of a plant. Um, some of them really get into it and enjoy posing with the plant. Some of them only want to take the picture of the plant. Either way is fine. But the, the idea behind doing that is they share all those photos in the discussion board area and they identify the different characteristics on that particular plant that they've learned about in the lesson and try to identify the scientific name of that plant. So it's important to me, even though I teach in an asynchronous environment, to make sure that my class is engaging for students and to provide them lots of practice opportunities that are low stakes or ungraded so that they can build on what they've learned and apply it and ultimately see how it does relate to their everyday lives. So in this example, I would like to show you um, how one way that we practice the scientific method in, in my class. So at this point in the semester, they've been introduced to the scientific process and into different variables in an experimental design. And so I, they, have, they have been given different examples and shown what the variables are for those examples. But this gives them an opportunity to set up an experimental design on their own and to identify what the different variables are in this experimental design. So for this uh, opportunity, I haven't, 
uh, it's not graded, they do have the opportunity to earn bonus points. I've used a software called Mentimeter, and the reason I like this is because it's anonymous. So sometimes I know that students are a little bit hesitant to answer if their name is associated with that. What if it's the wrong answer if they feel unsure? It's asynchronous, meaning that they don't have to all do this at the same time. Just within the three-day period, they have to go to this website, enter the code, and answer the questions. At the end of that three-day period, then I post for them the results of their entire class's feedback. So they can read those, and then the, the really important thing now is, is that I'll create a discussion board, and they will discuss together uh, about what they think now that they've seen all the other answers that their student that their classmates have given and I can also give feedback in that discussion board. So they're learning, they're participating, they're giving each other feedback and they're building on just the knowledge of, you know, other than just defining what a variable is, they're actually putting it into practice. Now, you could use this, you don't have to use this software, you could use a discussion board to have students give you feedback, um, any kind of a concept check if you want to find out where they're at with a particular concept and you pose a question, or you could use it for um, the muddiest point. So at some point, you could ask students, you know, what is your muddiest point in this particular lesson? And you could allow the, stu each, the students to give each other help on the muddiest points, or you could chime in. Um, and it, it helps, I use that some, and it helps me to see what is it in my class that students are getting? What is it that maybe I need to reinforce? One other example that I'll give you that I use in my class, and that is I have my students when we cover plants, to go out and take a selfie of a plant. Um, some of them really get into it and enjoy posing with the plant. Some of them only want to take the picture of the plant. Either way is fine. But the, the idea behind doing that is they share all those photos in the discussion board area and they identify the different characteristics on that particular plant that they've learned about in the lesson and try to identify the scientific name of that plant.